all three Gigafactories after six months of progress. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Who is the fastest? Giga Shanghai cranked along at an impressive, some might say unbeatable pace. Giga Berlin had some environmental and health-related setbacks, but despite a more ambitious project, made incredible strides. And Giga Texas, the most ambitious site of all, with the most challenging ground on which to build, is doing great as well. But which one is actually in the lead? Or is that even the right question to be asking? For a bit of perspective on the scale of this site, let's compare the footprint of Giga Texas to the factories in Shanghai and Berlin. This graphic comes courtesy of Reddit user Brandude87 and uses satellite imagery with the buildings overlaid. Apologies for the poor resolution. If it's something you guys would like to see more clearly, let me know in the comments and I'll make my own higher resolution version for month seven. And subscribe if you want to see that one when it comes out. Here is Giga Texas, Giga Shanghai, and Giga Berlin. Ain't they each so pretty in their own ways? So here's the Giga Texas site, and this is it compared to phase one of Giga Shanghai in the same scale. Giga Texas is well over double the size of Shanghai, and Shanghai was almost entirely on a single floor. While it's impressive that they were able to complete the factory and begin production in a year, if Texas or Berlin can come close to that, it will be a tremendous feat. Here's Giga Texas compared to Giga Berlin, also vastly larger than Shanghai and similarly grander in terms of ambition, but likely still only 50 to 60% of the size of Giga Texas. This isn't to take anything away from those contractors or those sites. Each new factory enjoyed the financial benefit of improving cash reserves and financial outlook, so it's understandable that the scale would increase on projects started later. So let's take a look at where each factory was after six months. And we'll start with Texas, since my weekly progress tracking videos include thoroughly detailed math on the project. If you haven't seen those, they're pretty detailed. Link in the description. The footings cover over 75% of the site already, which is a larger area than the entirety of Giga Shanghai or Giga Berlin. There are only two prefabricated concrete areas, which is significantly less than in Berlin, and those do take longer to construct. The tempo is allegro. Texas had the most difficult site to prepare by a substantial margin, as the former sand and gravel mine had hills and water-filled trenches to slowly bring to level, and the foundation required a mix of geopiers and cementitious pilings before they could even begin. Giga Shanghai, at the end of six months, was the clear leader, with very little exterior work remaining. Most of the walls were up, most of the roof was done, and the interior work was already well underway. It wasn't just the smallest of the factories, though. It also had the simplest ground prep required in advance of foundation work. It was a marshy farm beforehand, so it only required pilings on which to build. A fairer comparison in Shanghai would be their Phase 2, which broke ground around the start of 2020. It's taller, larger, and more complex, like Berlin and Texas, and at the six-month mark for that phase, they were still doing really well. Some walls were up, much of the roofing was finished, and interior work was certainly underway, but some of the buildings were still little more than skeletons. Now let's take a look at Berlin. Unlike Shanghai, where the ground was nearly ready from the start, they had a forest to clear, along with environmental delays related to hibernating bats. And they also had to safely search for and remove unexploded ordnance from World War II. Yes, that's still a thing in too many parts of the world. They also had to contend with a late design change, as the pilings originally specified would be too deep and could interfere with the water table, which could impact the safety of drinking water and other natural runoff. Instead of simple pilings, they switched to a more costly, complicated, and time-consuming design known as a floating foundation or balancing raft. With the benefit of having their own railway stub track where they could park train cars for extended times to allow unloading, they could bring in gigabutt loads of prefab concrete in ways that would be otherwise cost or logistically prohibitive for other locations. 
The pace was impressive regardless, with most foundation work done, a significant portion of the frame complete, and the beginnings of roof and exterior wall work. There was little sign of interior work at this point, but in consideration of the mandatory delays, the progress was nothing short of remarkable. There's one more site we need to look at, but first let me thank my Patreons like Andrew Hart, who get an inside look, bonus content, and make it possible for me to invest so many hours into each video, and I thank you. So for an added slice of deep-fried funzarella, Nicola broke ground on July 23rd of 2020, so they are a couple days shy of their six-month disappoint anniversary, as you can see in this video courtesy of Bear Workshop. He's fairly new to the drone coverage game, so if you want to stay up to date on Nicholas' progress, or whatever the word for it is that they're doing here in Nicholas speak, check out his channel and subscribe to him to follow all that. They finally have a crane, which is nice, I guess. Despite having the easiest ground prep compared to any of the other sites discussed, with nothing to clear or level, they still only have about a hundred footings in place and a framed up area only large enough to cover a basketball court at the rec center. I'm not sure what to say about Nicola without enraging my handful of Korean subscribers, but at the current pace they are unlikely to be able to complete even a small fabrication shop before burning through their dwindling cash reserves. With the likes of Mercedes, Kenworth, BYD, Tesla, and others moving into the semi-truck space, this is going to be a crowded market for a company with such limited facilities in which to compete, assuming they actually complete any facilities at all. So who is the fastest? Okay, well, let's get ready for some angry comments. Shanghai Phase 1 was clearly the fastest. Due to its small size, easy ground prep, arguably lax regulatory standards, access to building materials, and wealth of skilled construction labor, this should come as no surprise. In second place, though it's a much closer race, is Giga Shanghai Phase 2. Larger, more complicated than Phase 1, but still the most complete of the bunch on its six-month anniversary. If you'd like to argue that Shanghai will be two years to complete instead of one, that's fair, but I'd love to hear your reasoning in the comments either way. The fastest progress outside of China goes to Giga Berlin. Even with its tremendous size, double whammy delays, and more complicated construction methods, it's got by far the most enclosed space, despite a lot of early steps still remaining elsewhere on the site. Giga Texas, sadly, is in last place among Tesla's projects, though if you look back to see the side-by-side, site-by-site comparisons a month ago, link in the description, you'll see that the pace, picante sauce, is getting caliente. Unlike Berlin, Giga Texas works on Sundays and even has an overnight shift, though at reduced capacity for safety and logistical reasons. It is entirely likely that Texas will overtake Berlin for the second place spot in next month's update. Nikola's site does not qualify for even a participation trophy, though we can offer a ribbon if it will quiet their disturbingly rabid fan base. A nickel investment for Nikola's award seems reasonable, though it's more than I'd personally feel comfortable investing. Let's hear your predictions in the comments, and let us know which site you believe is actually ahead by the most after just six months of progress. Stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop. Sweat.